Um, so I'd like to uh, forward the question towards the Honorable Minister of Defence. Uh, is the Minister of Defence aware of the resolution adopted by the EU Parliament on 10th June 2021? which is a scathing indictment of the deteriorating human rights situation in Sri Lanka with specific reference to the continued use of the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Also, is the Minister aware that the possibility of losing the GSP plus concession will severely impact uh, Sri Lanka's already battered economy? These concessions have a direct bearing on industries that provide approximately 275,000 jobs and contributes to 40% of the country's total exports. Also, will the minister take prompt action to review the use of the PTA, a law that undermines the most basic due process safeguards and has for decades been used disproportionately to target minorities? For decades, calls have been made to repeal the PTA, but instead the government only continues to use the PTA, but even, uh, even issued regulations under the PTA in March this year that provides more powers to arbitrary target individuals, including detaining for up to two years without trial. Uh, now, Honourable Minister, this, this morning also this matter was raised. I was not aware that this matter will be raised this morning, but I had given this in. So uh, we welcome the fact that, uh, you know, that uh, thing, it will be looked into releasing these uh, people who have been arrested under the PTA. However, I would like to ask you to uh, request rather uh, to include uh, people who have been arrested under the Prevention of Terrorism Act in the last year. Uh, nearly 100 people have been arrested over various silly allegations, I would say, such as uh, uh, things that are uh, posted on Facebook, like photos, and even most recently there's a, there's a case, I think the EU Parliament had also taken that seriously, and uh, regarding a, 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 a boy from MENA who had posted a poem on uh, Facebook, and that was against terrorism that he had posted, but he is still under custody. So, Honourable Minister, my request is to include these people also. When you consider, uh, you know, releasing these people, consider these boys as well. Because, to be honest with you, there are some individuals that there's, there's the most recent case where a boy has been arrested for posting a photo on Facebook. He doesn't have a limb. He's, he doesn't have a limb. And he has got a prosthetic leg from uh, a donor from overseas had given him a prosthetic leg and sent money. And now the charge against him is that he has been, the money has been remitted into his account uh, to put this prosthetic leg. So it's, it's childish, it's childish matters like this that have been, that these allegations are really childish. So my urgent request is, I mean, you know, the importance of GSP Plus, we do understand that and, and I don't want to connect the two things together, but I don't want to connect it together, but my humble request is that you consider uh, including these people as well, Endal, Indre, Thinam, Pathing, Lund, Sunnal, Vadakulakle, Ethnio, Elenjaral, Inda, Payangarava, Tarajat, Ethnio, Kailu, 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 our Rodia, Nikke, Pathings, and Nutukanakano, Lahai, say Patrick Rahal. Indra Matakalava Mavatil, Sover and Soli or Olenger, our Rondo, Avir Tiosara, that put the Niaman and Kretaver. Other Katata, Pradipan and Soli or Navar, our Munal Porali, Punarval, Valika Pataver, Adeneratil, our one the Jananaya, Porali, Kachino, Rupiner. Ivara, Vadakula Matamilla, and Peralla Cholam, Kali, Adener Landra, the Prama, Tatle Kai Sedri Krangal, Yalpanam, Kulinochi, Mulati, Mena in the Anitha Mountain Kai Sedri Krangal. A Pengudia, Korika, Yenian Sunal, in the Payangara, the Tadachatta, Nuki, Adener the Payangara, Tadachatta, Yutam Nadan, the Kala Pahadil, Kai the Seda or Lame, Udandaya, Udale Seda, Akata, the Kadan the Verda Tukul, Kadan the Verda Tukul, Kai the Seda or Lay, Udanadia. In the Vidamana, in the Vidamana, Visarna could the work of Maram Vikapataville, Udaria Havangale, Ningal, Budivika Vandam and Ratan, Ingudi and Bana Vandukul. Nandri. Yeah, first of all, I must thank Honorable uh, Rasamanikam for raising this issue. But uh, the position of the government was very clearly articulated by Honorable uh, Namal Rajapaksha in the morning about how we feel regarding this. Uh, the Prevention of Terrorism Act PTA had been enacted in Sri Lanka in 1979 as a response to developing uh, terrorism threat. Taking cognizance of the concerns related to the several pr provisions of the PTA, successive government have attempted to amend the provisions or repeal the PTA and to introduce comprehensive legislation with regard to counterterrorism law in line with international standards. While the previous government who attempted to repeal the PTA and introduced new counterterrorism legislation. It had not been completed for four years due to the sensitive nature of the topic and the resistance of trade unions, student and religious group, and others based on impact on freedom. Although the PTA had been placed in abeyance 
for the, by the previous government. With the Easter Sunday attacks on April 2019, the PTA became instrumental in the arrest that followed to stop a second wave of attack. The present government is in the process of revisiting the provisions of the PTA. Towards this endeavor, the existing legislation is being studied to propose necessary amendment and will also draw on international best practices adopted by the other jurisdictions. Government is seriously working towards the early release of long-term detainees held under the PTA. In this regard, the Attorney General is also reviewing the case filed by the PTA pending before the High Court with a view to ensure that the expeditious disposal of the cases involving LTT cadre in order to bring a meaningful end to the said cases. Much misunderstanding had been caused by the regulation that had been published in Gasset 2218 stroke 68 of 12 March 2021 for the rehabilitation of those who may arrested as a result of the ongoing investigation into the uh, Easter Sunday bombings. The, the purpose and the objective was prevent long-standing litigation as it is happening now and to send them for rehabilitation and send them back, not to just take anybody. Because if you want to do that, under the PTA you could do it. The objective was to send them for rehabilitation uh, and rehabilitate them and put them back to the society as we did in 2009. It is recalled that in the aftermath of the three decades conflict against terrorism in May 2019, the Sri Lankan government decided on the more humane path of rehabilitating and releasing thousands of former LTT cadres instead of prosecuting them. It's about 12,784 in numbers. Due to the government progress and true commitment with regard to the, its child and former child soldiers and considering the Sri Lanka's successful completion of the Security Council mandate program to end the recruitment and use of children in armed conflict, Sri Lanka was delisted from the SG's list of shame, Annexure 2 of the UN Security Council Resolution 1612 in Children and Armed Conflict in June 2012. The purpose of the regulation issued on the 12th of March 2021 under the Gazette 2218 stroke 68 is to similarly rehabilitate the suspect being arrested in this latest investigation into terrorism instead of persecuting them. Further, on the 21st of June 2021, the Cabinet of Ministers met and decided, that was yesterday, to appoint a Cabinet Subcommittee and an Officials Committee to assist the Cabinet Subcommittee in order to review the Prevention of Terrorism Act, number 48 of 1979, and to submit a report to the Cabinet within three months. Given the above, the government categorically rejects the claim that the PTA had been used unfairly. Government of Sri Lanka expressed its regret over the adoption of a resolution in the European Parliament on the 10th of June 2021, in spite of the significant progress made by Sri Lanka in the promotion and protection of human rights, reconciliation and development, and close and cordial engagement maintained with the EU. Government of Sri Lanka maintains a regular, cordial, and multifaceted dialogue with the EU. All aspects of bilateral relationships came under review on the 23rd session of the EU-Sri Lanka Joint Commission held on the 25th of January 2021 on a virtual platform. Sri Lanka maintained an ongoing discussion with the European EU Commission on the review of Sri Lanka's EU GSP Plus compliance with 27 core international conventions. Government of Sri Lanka is cognizant of the significance of the EU's market to Sri Lankan export. The EU is the second largest export market for Sri Lanka, absorbing one-third of the country's total export. Government of Sri Lanka is fully committed to safeguarding the GSP Plus for Sri Lanka and will continue to maintain a close dialogue with regard to the commi commitment while demonstrating the country's progress in reconciliation and development. And our attempt to review the PTA and review the people who have been held under PTA is not because of GSP or any other compulsion. That is required as a government, we believe that the, the, the criminal procedure code and the criminal justice system should continue to evolve and it should be on par with the world. So therefore, we are continue to make progress in that direction and we are giving that assurance here. Wherever possible, we, whoever who could be released, we will, doing, we will do that and we will expedite the cases and we will work on reviewing the PTA. Thank you, Chairman.